let's get started by installing the Roblox Studio software. We'll open up a web browser. And we'll go to roblox.com slash create. You will see that Roblox website has the games, the avatar shop, create and Roblox. When we have already signed in and we're already a developer, actually when you hover over this create, it actually takes you to roblox.com slash developer. So just to be super sure, let's make sure we type it into the bar roblox.com slash create. What we're hoping is for this kind of very snazzy video where we've got a start creating button. See, manage my games is if you're already signed up, we've already done this process. So let's click the start creating and what should happen is that you will be offered up the choice of downloading, here we go, download studio. Just going to close that one there. Download the studio. This is going to download the package. For Mac users, this is a uh, disk image that you double click and drag into your applications folder. For Windows, uh, this will be um, a Windows installer. So once we've installed uh, Roblox Studio, depending on our platform, we can close down our web browser. We can open up Roblox Studio. We will have to sign in with the same login as what you use for when you play games in Roblox. So it's your same username, same password. And if you have two-factor authentication on, which I strongly recommend that you do, then uh, you'll get an email or a text asking you to also put that code in. Once we're in and Roblox Studio opens, this is gonna be our, our opening uh, kind of page. So I'm just gonna give you a quick uh, look around. We have uh, we can start by clicking the new button and there are a bunch of templates we can also organize them by theme and by gameplay or we can look at all of them now after we've done this tutorial you will be able to load some of these templates and be able to tweak them change them edit some of the code follow some other online tutorials by a vast majority of people in the community who make awesome tutorials as well and hopefully feel confident to tweak these to suit uh, your specific kind of needs. What we're gonna do is use the Baseplate 2021 template to allow us to begin. On the left-hand side, this will also list all of the games that you've made inside the studio uh, and recent and archive. So straight away, we'll making sure we're logged in, our name's in the top corner that we're logged in, and then if we click on Baseplate 2021, this is going to load for us there we go. So now I'm just going to give you an overview of the Roblox Studio software. There's a lot going on with multiple tabs, buttons, boxes, etc. And I'm going to go over the most important ones that will allow us to begin. This main section in the middle is the view of what we're seeing for our game, the 3D world. For those of us who play Roblox, uh, or use any kind of three-dimensional software, uh, we're used to this kind of viewport. So we can right-click and move our mouse, and this enables us to look around. We can scroll on the mouse to zoom in and out. We can use the W, A, S, and D standard Roblox keys to move forward, back, left and right. So this enables us to navigate exactly as we would as if we were playing uh, the game itself. Okay, so this is our main view viewpoint. Move around and as you can see this little kind of six-sided dice will show us our X, Y, Z, our top, our front, our right, our left, etc. So this gives us a good idea of how we are navigating our 3D world. Everybody is familiar with uh, the standard Roblox spawn base plate. This is where you always need to have one of these. This is when the game starts. This is where players will appear. And this has been put in as a, a default to begin with. You can hover over items in Roblox and you can see that they are uh, uh, they will uh, highlight to show that you can um, interact with them and you can click on them 
and that will bring them up in the right hand side. It's really important. The explorer is the most important sidebar to have. This is where everything is listed. Everything in our workspace, everything to do with our players, everything to do with um, all of the scripts, the code, everything that we're going to be storing with inside Roblox Studio. There is a lot going on here and we're going to come to how we utilize all of these within our game because Roblox is brilliant that it has a lot of stuff inbuilt that we don't already need to code and things will appear within that explorer as we play the game. So it's very interesting um, the way in which everything's organized and it's not the same as other game engines. Across the top we have a home, a model, a test, a view and a plugins. Let's start at the beginning with our home. We've got our select which is enabling us to click. We have our move which enables us to move objects in a three-dimensional space. These rather handy arrows appear and they are the same color as what we can see within our world space. So green will take us up and down on the Y axis. Uh, the red will take us uh, forwards and back on the X and the blue will take us left and right on the Z. Basically allowing us to drag the arrow and move things around. This is going to be incredibly useful later when we need to position and move things. The scale button will allow us to click on an object and again drag each of the, uh, the colored spheres to enable us to alter the scale of our objects. Okay, and rotate. Again, we get these three colored circles that will allow us to rotate on that actual individual axis. We better leave the uh, spawn position as it is for now. The editor box. If you click on any of these boxes, editor, toolbox, this will show the show or hide on the left hand side each of these um, different tools that we're going to be using. For now I would not use the toolbox as we begin. I'm going to talk about safety later on but the toolbox is a set of community created uh, objects, scripts, code, things like that. For us to begin I want us to look at creating our own from scratch rather than relying on stuff that has been built by the community because unfortunately um, we can find that lots of um, people may create stuff and put code inside a 3D model and you may add that into your game and actually there's some code that's doing some things in the background that you didn't know about. So until we kind of feel really confident in knowing how everything works inside Roblox, we're going to leave the toolbox alone for now. The terrain editor is something we're going to come back to in a separate video that's going to allow us to sculpt and build our actual world so that it doesn't just look like this big flat grey boring landscape. Okay, part is a very interesting one. You can see that we have a little drop down and this enables us to place 3D objects in the scene of either a block, a sphere, a wedge or a cylinder. Let's just have a little look at that now. I'm going to click on sphere and now you can see that it has created a sphere for me inside Roblox and I can scale this, I can move this. exactly using these tools and of course I could select it and drag it and move it where I need it to go. I'm actually going to move it so that it's half down. So simple tools to allow you to add in various, let's add a wedge, let's move this, I'm going to scale it and make it very big. Let's rotate it and let's put this right here. Okay, not exactly exciting, but it's going to enable us to start to 
create and add in basic 3D objects to allow us to shape our world. Okay, that's our part tool. If at any point I've accidentally clicked and added loads of parts in that I don't actually want, let's zoom in, we can click and press the delete key or the backspace key on our keyboard to delete and remove these from the world. All right, so don't worry too much if you've accidentally added uh, a few few objects into your world. I'm just going to skip across the UI one for now because I'm going to do a separate video about building our user interface. These are all grey and you know they don't have any colour or any kind of texture on them. So let's click on the object itself and let's take a look at this next one along which says material and colour. So very interesting. Let's just start with the colour one for now. Drop down box, here's our palette and we are able to click and change and our 3D object that we have put into the scene will become the relevant colour that we've picked. So that's nice to allow us to get started and make each of these, let's make that that colour there, and we can start to build and colour the objects. Materials are slightly different. You might know these um, in Minecraft as textures. Um, these are images that are placed and rendered onto each side of the three-dimensional object to make them look that, like they are just not flat objects. So if we take the cobblestone and if we take something that's a little more of the correct colour, let's select this. There we go, the granite's nice and easy to see. So we can add the granite, let's click on the sphere, let's make the sphere look neon for example. Okay, so these are a bunch of inbuilt uh, materials, think of these as the textures in Roblox, in fact I can even click and change the entire ground. Now. I can click on an object, I can click on an object. Why can't I click on the whole of the ground and change that? Well, this is where we have to come across to our actual explorer to highlight it. So let's take a look at the explorer that is on the right hand side, okay? For some reason, if your explorer is not on the right hand side, let's just jump across to the view and right here we can see all of the different things that we're able to view and see within Roblox. And this top left one is the Explorer. If I click this, this will toggle the Explorer on and off. Toggle the properties of each thing that I select on and off. These two are the most important. So if for some reason they're not displayed, they should be when you start up, but if they're not, go into the view and click each of these. All of these other things you're able to open if you really want, but for now we're going to keep our interface clean. Let's come back then to our model, uh, to our home tab. Now, we've made the sphere be a neon pink, we've made the wedge be a granite. I want the base to be green grass maybe. So let's take a look in our explorer now. And what we can see in the workspace can see that there's a hierarchy. We can click each of these arrows to open up the hierarchy to see everything that exists within our entire Roblox game. If we click on the spawn location, there we go, that there is our spawn. If we click on this wedge, oh look, that's our wedge we added in. And this part here must be our sphere that we added in. You can always right click and rename these the, uh, pink so that you're able to know at a glance what each of those objects are also this is very handy as well imagine I'm building a giant world and I am all the way over here I'm just gonna keep going I'm gonna keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going okay and I turn around and my object 
imagine this world is filled with tons of objects and I want to get back over there where that pink sphere is. Now I could sit there and walk all the way through, I could zoom in and out, but a very handy tool, and this exists in uh, game engines such as Unity as well, is if we select the item, here, the sphere pink, then if we hover our mouse over the middle and press the letter F, this will focus and take us directly to that object. Very useful for jumping around our scene and getting to the relevant objects that we've built within the scene. Okay, so get used to being able to find an item and then you can press F to focus on it. Okay, let's click on our base plate. Now, and actually if we press F and focus, that's gonna zoom out so we can see our entire world. And you can see it's quite big. So now that we have selected it, we can see underneath that it contains a texture. If we click on our base plate itself, now we can see the properties tab. Remember, we went to view and we opened the properties tab. So if when you're clicking on the base plate, you can't see this underneath, come back to view. Let's open up our properties. And now we can see that we have a brick color. And if we click on this, we are now able to edit the color. So this is different to clicking on the actual object, the 3D object, and changing its material and color. So we can select, I'm going to give it a blue color. And this has now changed our color. And can you see underneath it says material plastic. Now we can change, and these are the exact same materials that are in our list over here that allows us to add a material to our 3D objects. We can click and change this to maybe we want the neon. It's a little bit right. Maybe we want it to look like glass. Or maybe we're going to just start by having it grass and I'm gonna change the color to be a green color. Excellent. Spawn location, press F to focus. Now I'm zoomed in. Now we can see that our world has been textured with this kind of green grass looking appearance. We can do the same for our spawn location. So now that we can select our spawn location, we can look at its appearance and it's gray. So we can change our spawn location to be any of these colors. Let's make it a bright orange. And we can also change its material as well if we so wish. It can be glass so that it is now shiny. We could make it be diamond plate so it looks metal. That looks pretty cool. So let's change the orange. Let's make that a more industrial silver looking. There, that's quite a nice spawn looking location. Excellent. All right. You're now going to say to me, well, what about people? How are we going to get those in? Tell you what we're going to do. Now that we've set up some basic kind of the way in which this looks, let's test our game. And you'll say, but we don't have a game. But we do, we have an environment of which we can spawn somebody in, and we have two interesting 3D objects that we can look around. How do we do this then? Well, there's two ways we can do this. On the Home tab, we then have a Play, Resume and Stop button here, or tinily, up here next to file we have a small play and stop button here as well I'm going to click the play button and this is going to load the game and spawn me in here I am no laughing at my uh, appearance please and we can play this exactly how we play Roblox so off I am I'm running whee, jump in What's great is we haven't had to code in any of this. In traditional game engines, we would have to include the code to enable not only the person to move, but to animate them moving, the jump, the spawning. All of this is handled by Roblox, which is brilliant. In fact, we can see straight away the standard chat box is there, the list of avatars is there, all of the people that are playing this potential game. So we're already getting started with something. I mean, it's not really a game, it's a wedge 
and a glowing pink sphere. But you get the idea. Let's stop that and return back to our world. One of the things I really want to stress is that whenever we make any changes to our game, it's very important to press play and test it to make sure that it works. If we make too many changes before we play and run and test it, if there's a problem, we might not know which bit that we have changed and tweaked, edited, added, coded. We might not be able to be sure exactly which bit was causing the problem. What's really important is to take little steps every time, add something in, test it, make sure it works, come back and repeat. Now this might seem a little tedious, a little boring, but I promise you it will save you a lot of time and frustration in the long run if we follow this kind of procedure. Okay, if we want to look at our 3D models and edit them some more, we can go onto the Model tab, and now it's the same select, move, scale, rotate. We can also have a transform, and this is um, for slightly more advanced manipulation, um, and we can see that we get a grid, and this enables us to really go finite detail. In Roblox, the units of measurement are called studs, as we may know from playing, and the bricks, and this allows us to really manipulate on a slightly more advanced level than just within our um, original layout. So I've just made this slightly smaller and we have a few separate little tools for that. This enables you to add in lots of small individual parts and build up slightly bigger three-dimensional models. So it takes a, a while but you can actually build things uh, yourself which is nice. So I've made this a little bit a little bit smaller. Excellent. We can also set the values for how much we move by. So this is currently moving one stud at a time. For finessing, you could uh, change that to be a lot higher. We could move this in increments of studs. So this enables us to get really precise lining up within the rest of the world. And again, we can still see our part material. We also have now a surface. This allows us to um, join objects together. Along with this union, negate, separate, and a few other welding tools that allow you to join objects together so that they become part of the same object. Right now you can see I cannot um, um, these two are joined together when I when I eventually move them in, but they, they are two separate objects and there are ways in which we can merge those together. I'm not going to cover that uh, in this video today. Um, that is something you can look at and explore uh, yourself. The final thing along um, the model though is this effects and we won't look at the spawn, that is to create a brand new spawn point. We already have one in the game, but let's take a look at the effects. Let's click on our sphere and let's take a look at the effects here. This is where we can have um, fire and smoke uh, already uh, coming directly from our actual object. We can experiment with a lot of these um, and see how they work. We can take uh, the fire we can give this a big size by changing its size and then let's go back to home and press play let's come to the top let's take a look and we can see well, it doesn't really look like it's on fire, does it? I think we need to increase our size. Let's change our size to 90. There we go. Now we can see it. We can see it directly in the editor. So we've made it a lot bigger. 30 seems to be the... Oh, let's keep going. 30 is our biggest size, so we can't make it any bigger. What we could do, of course, 
is we could shrink our sphere down and then it becomes more obvious that our sphere is on fire. That's a pretty cool looking set of effects straight away. Again, we haven't had to code this ourselves. Yeah, that looks quite nice. Let's go back to model. Let's click on our wedge. Let's give this an effect too. We could add, um, let's make it sparkling. Why not? And we can completely change and customize the colors because it's currently sparkling uh, pink. Let's take a look down here into our properties. Oh look, let's change our sparkle color. And now this time we've actually got um, a, a full on color wheel so that we can really finesse. I'm going to make it uh, a kind of a yellow color. There we go. Oh, I didn't press OK. Let's press OK. <laughs> Excellent. There we go. Lovely stuff. So you can see now that we can just start to add, let's add some to our spawn location as well, why not? Let's add some effects to our spawn location, shall we? Let's add some smoke, just because we can. And there we go, and that's our color. So let's press, let's press play and test this. I'd like to see this in action. Off we go. There we go, smoke sparkling and fire amazing so from a visual style we can now feel confident that we can add in blocks we can give them different colors we can make them all different kinds of sizes and shapes and we can add these funky kind of effects onto them as well that's mostly using the home tab to enable us to put in parts, color them, using the Explorer and the properties, coming across to the Model tab and choosing some effects and enabling us to alter the way in which these look. Okay, one thing we haven't done is making sure that we save the work that we have done so far. We should do this regularly uh, throughout this tutorial just to make sure that we don't lose anything. So we've already looked at save to file where we can save that locally onto our hard drive. Uh, we can save it to Roblox, uh, which would pop it uh, inside uh, the, the server version. That's one of the things that we can also do because then that allows us to go on another computer and pick this up. So actually, you know, if you've done this uh, workshop on one computer. If you save to Roblox, you can then log in, in on any other computer on Roblox Studio, logging in with your name, and then you can bring that file back down again. So that's pretty useful too. Uh, and publish to Roblox as well. I'm just gonna publish to Roblox as. Um, and this lists all the games that you've, you've got or built. And what we're gonna want to do is click create new game. And this is where we can give the game a name. We can write a description. We make sure we uh, give ourselves the that we are the creator. The, there's ways you can actually work with um, more than one person working on the same game, and so you can uh, work on how that's credited and created. You can pick a genre if you so wish, or you can just put them in all. Um, and choose uh, which devices they're targeted for. You can't actually pick console um, at the moment, only certain uh, developers can. Uh, but if you pick computer, phone and tablet, then you know that this is going to be playable on a wide variety of things. All right, and you'd click create, and this would then add that in to um, your successfully untitled game, successfully published, and this is a place. So one of the things we have to think about, the way in which um, Roblox calls these things a game is, is an experience and it can hold multiple places which are kind of like levels really. So if you think about some of the other games um, that you might play, you might have a place that's the lobby where everybody jumps in and then you'll often see it spawns to the game. That would be another place and so it allows you to make these things and you can have up to four in one game. We're going to concentrate on everything being inside the same place, the same level that we build on and it will be uh, published with inside this game. 
you can see when it's done that it's actually like pinged in the top corner about some game settings uh, so I'm actually just going to I'll close this and we'll look at the game settings so if we go to file and game settings this is where uh, the name of the game and the description can appear we can also add in a game icon so we're able to click on this uh, and add in a uh, add in a any kind of image that we want for our icon remember you can see the thing here that says it's going to be reviewed by moderators um, same as screenshots we can add screenshots in but again they're all uh, they have to be reviewed by moderators before anyone else can see them um, even actually if the game is made just for friends etc it's it's done to ensure safeguarding and safety all right so you can put things in there but they will take a while to show up and these are some of the other settings that we saw before, genre, playable devices, etc. There's a bunch of other stuff down the side. I'm just going to quickly go through them um, because they're not all available or pertinent. But let's just take a look at what they do anyway. So we've got permissions. This is the most important one, right? Who can play the game? So private means literally only you, the, the owner and anybody who's collaborating using this team create settings. Public means it's just out there for the world to play. Anybody can play it. I would not advise that at this stage because some of the coding and things that we're going to do um, is not 100% uh, secure in the way in which um, you know professional games are kind of done with with server side client testing um, that would take a very long time to implement and there's plenty of videos to kind of see how to do that but some of the things if they're not secure anybody could play the game and therefore hack and exploit the game our, our games are very low level but that's just the the way um, it's kind of working at the moment I would suggest that you set it on friends which means that if you send this link around to all of your friends who are on your friends list then you're all able to play this game uh, without any interference from uh, anybody in the outside world and of course you would trust your friends so this is just where we set these settings but as I'm going to talk about later this is not the only place where we have to set it so that it is available to be able to be played with friends there's another part on the roblox website when we finish publishing this we're going to need to tweak some settings to make sure it actually shows up monetization isn't there in terms of servers and things uh, and paid stuff uh, you would need to create those but you need to have an 18 plus account you need to be pre-approved as a creator etc the one thing you can do is create badges um, that's something that you can look at to reward uh, your friends and your players as well uh, creating badges and private servers and things does cost robux as well so just bear that in mind uh, the security are settings for uh, if we're using certain things within the studio we're not covering any of those today but if you follow other tutorials online that may say you need to change some security settings this is where you can find them the places will list each of the variety of uh, the levels they call places in here as i talked about before uh, and we'll just pop uh, you would see those ones in here as a big list Localization is where you can set the source language uh, for the game and you can put a couple of translation stuff uh, as well in there if you so wish. The avatar settings are whether you are using a bunch of all of the different types of animations that exist, the uh, avatar styles that exist that are available. So you can force to be a specific one or you can let the players have a choice. Um, you can also do some interesting things here where you can totally change the scale and sizing of bodies so if you want everyone to be really small but have a giant head just in general you don't have to actually do any coding that's that's some stuff that you can do here and you can actually even override the body parts as well so you can make everybody have a certain style head or a certain style torso uh, by using specific id numbers from within the toolbox um, and you can also do the same for uh, some of the clothing stuff as well i'll let you experiment with that uh, some other time uh, the world settings then are where we set our gravity and our jump uh, how high you jump and the power, what the standard walking distance is uh, and the slope for uh, you've often maybe played games in Roblox where you've tried to go up the side of some terrain and you just can't get up there, you can't jump up there. You can set the maximum slope which is what is the steepness that you're allowed to walk up uh, and anything greater than that you would fall down. 
Okay. Uh, again, you can play with some of these. There's a couple of presets here for um, different types of games, and you can override these too. Uh, and finally, uh, there's just uh, a shutdown servers, which is only useful for like development purposes if you want to uh, in big big games that are being played. If people are playing them and you want, wish to click file publish and publish a new one, you would have to shut down all the servers, meaning nobody was actually playing the game because it would break. So you may see this on some popular games that you play where it says, you know, the servers are offline for a set amount of time. Uh, that's uh, the way in which you would do that. All right, then. So that's all of the settings that we need to do. Uh, let's get back to working on our game. Let's take a look at how we can use the terrain editor to build and sculpt our world so that it isn't uh, just a rather large flat base for us to work on. There's several ways of doing this. I'm going to show you the um, terrain generator and then I'm going to look at how we can also um, sculpt. Let's start with the terrain editor. So we make sure we click on the home, make sure that we've selected, we click on the editor so that it opens in the left hand side. Uh, we've also got this uh, asset manager. I'm just going to actually close that so that you can see what I'm working on here. In the terrain editor, we've got a create, we've got a region, and we have a edit. Each of these tools will work. Um, they're fairly self-explanatory, uh, enabling us to shape the landscape. But what I want to first look at is a very quick way of creating and generating an entire world very quickly using um, biomes. Anyone who plays Minecraft, you're very used to this kind of terminology. Let's click the generate and straight away, actually I need to zoom out even more, we have, um, you can see I'm very, very far out now. We can see that we have this, um, this box. It doesn't quite fill our entire uh, world. We can drag the we can drag these blue spheres to stretch out and our size uh, is written here. I'm actually just going to um, make sure that's um, back to where it was. Okay. okay, so we can drag and shape this to fill our world a little bit more if we so wish and of course we can adjust the height as well. I'm going to just leave it at that size for now. Let's take a look at all of the settings that we can do. What we have is under the material settings, we can choose which biomes to apply. So Roblox has got itself a few inbuilt kind of settings that enable us to pick. So at the moment, hills, plains, and mountains. And we can set the size of the biome within that. I'm going to turn caves off for now. And then we also have seed number. So What's interesting about this is uh, I've seen people that have created really interesting landscapes and then they're able to share these numbers. These seed numbers are the same as Minecraft in a way, um, in that if you type that number in, that will give you those exact same settings. Anyway, we can decide that uh, I'm just going to put the fact that we've got some hills, some plains, some mountains, no caves, and I'm going to click generate. We're going to have to wait whilst it uh, creates uh, and builds this for us. Um, so this is an ideal time to uh, take a little break and grab a drink. Or what's really interesting is I like to see it being uh, created. We can't actually uh, click and navigate around here, but can, you can actually watch the landscape being created and generated, which is quite nice. We've actually got quite a lot of hills uh, and scenery and terrain in there. Wow. Okay, so that has now generated that for us. Let's take a look, shall we, at our world. It's obviously going to be uh, slow for me to press the WASD and move around, but you can see that, wow, this has created an incredible looking world for us to wander around and explore already. There's our uh, base plate and it's already textured it. There's our grass swaying in the breeze. Very, very fast to enable us to build um, a world. Ah, look, there's our glowing sphere. And that must mean somewhere our um, 
Spawn must be around here somewhere. So the terrain has been sculpted and created, but it will cover up anything else that we have built. So it is great for us to, I'm just going to zoom out here, it is great for us to get started building an incredible world very, very quickly. But if we've spent ages uh, creating various objects, it's going to cover them. So we're going to need to sculpt and change and manipulate this a little bit further, especially because um, I'm pretty sure my spawn's around here somewhere. Remember, what did I say? How could we find it? We could click on our spawn location, hover our mouse, and press F. Yes, unfortunately, I can't focus on it because it's hidden underneath and we're in the terrain editor. Okay, let's go to edit. And now the giant blue box has disappeared. Now I'm going to press F and zoom in, and I can see that my spawn location is actually, um, and all of these things, are completely underneath my terrain. Now I could, of course, just move these into position. This would be possible. I can click the Move button. I'm making sure the spawn location is there, and I can drag this up until it becomes visible into the world. And now, if I run the game, I will at least spawn there rather than stuck inside the terrain. Here we go. And here I am able to run and navigate around the world that we created. Fantastic. So as you can see, oh, jump, come on. And we can look around and marvel at our world that we've created in a single click. And there's our burning sphere down there that we could also add as well. So you can see that straight away, it's incredibly powerful to get creating. I think we should move our other objects up as well. Let's click on our sphere. Let's click move. Let's bring this up. I'm actually happy to have it uh, floating in midair because it looks cool. Let's get our wedge and let's also move our wedge up as well. Doesn't quite have the same look now that uh, we have our world, but hey, it's there. Fantastic. Great stuff. Amazing, amazing. One of the things we do need to look at is making sure our objects are um, fixed within the world. Now that we've moved them around to the terrain, I'm just going to take our spawn location. And I'm just going to make sure that this is like fixed in position. So obviously in lots of games you can kind of um, potentially shoot and blast and interact with uh, objects in the world, send them flying, etc. Um, one thing we potentially don't want to have disappearing is the spawn location, unless of course you're playing like uh, uh, Brickspire or something like that. So let's scroll down, let's scroll down, let's scroll down in our properties. We've selected spawn location and we're scrolling down in our properties. We already know we can change the color, we can change what it looks like, we know we've got a diamond plate, etc. Let's keep scrolling down past all of this information and you can see there's one called locked. And if we tick that box, then that's locked in space. So even if we have um, projectiles or um, other players, we can't actually then move that. That's fixed within the world space. Very useful. All right, let's get back to doing our uh, terrain sculpting. Maybe I don't like this giant mountain that's right next to me. So in the terrain editor, you can see we have an add, subtract, a grow, erode, smooth, flatten paint let's just go through each of these tools i'm probably going to make a bit of a mess of uh, of my world but it's more to demonstrate let's click on the add button and now you can see that we have uh, a blue sphere that that sticks to the landscape as we move around um i'm just i'm not clicking at the moment i'm just um i'm just moving so that you can uh, see On the left-hand side, we can change our brush settings. So it could be a cube. It could also be a cylinder. 
or we could be a sphere and we can choose to um, make sure we snap to a grid or we can be a bit more freeform we can also choose a material to apply to draw in so I'm going to pick water and now I am going to click and sculpt and add water into the world doesn't that look horrible not necessarily um, what I wanted to do so the add will allow us to build in three dimensions with any of the materials that we wanted um, possibly useful for waterfalls but doesn't maybe uh, look very nice undoing that then ah okay well we're gonna have to do the subtract tool to potentially um, subtract away the land this will allow us to um, hollow out but we can't really undo what we have built so we have to be a little bit careful now I'm subtracting the land and I'm hollowing out so that I can make uh, tunnels caves we're cutting through the landscape completely I'm just hollowing out okay so they're quite quite destructive and um, abrasive tools what if I just wanted to make this hill rather than add to it what if it, I want to just kind of inflate it a little bit well this is where we use the grow and the erode tool instead so if I click on grow what this will do now is it will just this allows me to sculpt and just inflate I mean if I hold down too much it's going to just keep adding um, and allow me to keep building and I can just grow 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 so you can see that uh, if I zoom out even more I can I can build and just click and drag and build and sculpt away so that's the grow the erode works in the exact opposite way this will smooth down so rather than cutting through with the subtract or building on top of the add this takes the landscape that we've got and we manipulate it uh, slightly more um, more gentle so there we go I'm just going to smooth that down make a little make a little canyon there all right the smoothing tool will allow us to uh, smooth out any sharp um, any sharp jumps that we have made um, within our within our building um, so if I just look at this really bad example here um, it's very jagged and I can I can use the smooth to try to um, manipulate this down and now I've got something that's a little bit nicer and flatter um, the flatten tool well that does exactly what you would suggest to actually flatten off if I click and drag and scrub over this landscape here and zoom down this will uh, attempt to flatten off there you go zoom out if I click and drag that attempts to give us a nice flat surface like I say you would want to experiment uh, with each of these paint is then the exact same brush but we can then paint the material over the landscape so all we're going to do is we're not going to change the shape of it we're just going to change what it looks like so maybe I would like to paint this terrain here to be a slightly different maybe I want it to be cobblestone I don't know why but maybe I do now if I paint over it it's now looking like cobblestone so this enables us to uh, draw and create notice it doesn't do the terrain uh, the flat base plate it's only the terrain that we have created and I can click and draw maybe I want it to be 
ice instead. You get the idea. Please do a slightly nicer job than myself. Um, but you can see that with these tools, building a large biome, creating, creating worlds, sculpting them, painting them, is relatively uh, easy to do. It just takes time to finesse and uh, uh, and make it look really, really interesting. And this entire world is 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 explorable. We can run around in it. Um, and now that we've published this, let's file save. So immediately, although we don't have a game, we have an explorable environment. So we have a you know an immersive three D world that our friends and ourselves we can all join together and wander around and explore uh, and see and marvel at the creation. The last thing I'm going to look at is the sea level, um, which is currently um, a box that we can move up and down and we can then click create and it's going to fill the world with water. Wow, oh dear, the sea has completely filled um, our world that's not what we wanted I wanted that to be a bit lower if as long as we leave the box bigger than our C if we go below it's not going to work but as long as we leave our this this large box bigger and we click the evaporate whoo that's removed all of our C for us so actually what I really wanted was I'm gonna go really low over my terrain um, is maybe I would like to add some water in. Let's have a look. Um, maybe that's a bit too much. Yeah, and then let's click create. And now it's filled it um, with water. Let's play that and just see if that looks okay. Amazing. So. There's some water that we've added for our sea. Oh look, and I'm swimming. Classic. Oh, I need to uh, rotate. My fire's going the wrong way. Swimming. Perfect. So again, we didn't need to code any of that at all. It's already inbuilt. Oh look, there's my cave that I dug out. Terrible, I'm going to go for a swim. amazing okay there we go look at that I can totally swim all of this just from playing experimenting and exploring with um, the terrain there's my terrible ice on the hill yeah okay fantastic that's looking okay I think we should all be very pleased um, with what we've created. What we're going to come on to next is start to think about a game around how we can collect items, collect things, how we might um, uh, touch certain dangerous objects that can destroy us, reset our score, send us back to the beginning. Perhaps on our uh, island, our, our, our game that we've made here, we're going to have a series of objects that people have to collect and get the most points. We'll also have a leaderboard, some of the various things that we find that are standard in most Roblox games. What we're moving on to next is going to be coding, so now's a perfect time to take a break, make sure we file save everything that we've done, and when we come back, we're going to start to look at how we can use scripting and coding to make uh, make this into an actual game. Brilliant. See you soon.